Hello and welcome to the Household Simulation Model webinar. Uh, we hope this webinar can show you how the Household Simulation Model can be a vital tool in meeting your food and packaging waste reduction targets. This webinar was produced by the Reducing Food and Packaging Waste Through Product Innovation Simulation Projects and funded by the Natural Environment Research Council as part of the Smart Sustainable Packaging Challenge. We're also in partnership with RAP, who are already using the new version of the model. Uh, details of the full team and where you can find more information can be found on the last page of this webinar, which will also be circulated as a PDF. So to begin with, let's give you a bit of context and show you why the household simulation model is important. So as part of the core told commitment and as potential signatories of the Plastics Pact, there's still lots of businesses can do to reduce per capita food waste by 50-50%. Uh, that's to meet SDG 12.3 and also to reduce plastic waste at the same time, especially few changes that can be made which will affect the household food waste. Uh, it's really difficult to quantify the impact of the proposed best practices, which are often sort of suggested as part of RAP roadmaps, like the pathway to setting with uncut fruit and veg loose on what on household food waste. It's difficult and expensive to measure household food waste directly. We also know it's really difficult to make decisions about whether to adopt these best practices as retailers without quantifiable data and what the impact will be. So the household simulation model is a tool available to RAP that can provide insight into these issues in advance of any direct measurement, which you can use or ask to be used on your behalf. Um, you know, you can sort of commission it for your own purposes. You can supply data on what you think the proposed changes uh, might do or the, the people they might affect, and RAP can use that data to model the estimated effects using the model. We strongly think this is the best. This is the next best thing compared to the expensive and time-consuming real-world measurements of household food waste, and it can help you make decisions that will protect the environment effectively and without additional risks or costs. So it's a bit about me. I'm, I'm Jack Pickering, and I'll be taking you through this webinar and introducing you to the household simulation model today. I do qualitative research for the household simulation model project, and I also organise and coordinate the impact and engagement related activities for the project. As I said, today I'll talk to you what the household simulation model is, how it works, what you can do with it, and a little bit about how to use it as well. So, just to give you some background on the project. <coughs> the first uh, household simulation model of this type was created by Tom Quested at RAP in 2013. And since then, it has been developed and sort of improved upon by collaboration between RAP and the University of Sheffield. The new version of the model we're talking about today has involved new partners like City University of London and the Universities of Kent and Greenwich. Uh, over time, the household simulation model has had a significant effect on industry practices around packaging and package labelling to reduce food waste. For example, in 2019, RAP published one of its retail survey reports using the household simulation model to generate some of the findings. In 2020, Arla, the dairy cooperative, changed its packaging for Cravendale Long Life Milk using the, the household simulation model to support its decision. In 2022, a new RAP report was released, which compared the impacts of packaging and selling loose. Uh, that's fresh, fresh fruit and vegetables sold loose. Uh, this was based on household simulation model results. In February 2023, RAP released a retail pathway guidance document informing retail how they could progress to selling more fruit and vegetables loose based on the findings of the previous reports generated with household simulation model reports. So these real world impacts aren't just from the previous version of the model. We've delivered a workshop to RAP in May 2023, and they're already using the model to inform new recommendations and shape new work. So let's say about this new model that we've been working on, as opposed to the old one. So the new model, and the whole purpose of developing the, uh, the new model has been to add in new functionality of all kinds. But the main point is that you can estimate the food, food waste and also packaging waste at the same time. So that's the food and packaging waste effects of proposed interventions to packaging or household behaviour. So, for example, for household behaviour, it might represent the effects of household behaviour campaigns, whereas interventions to packaging might mean, uh, let's say, um, you know, new package sizes or new package uh, packaging types with different shelf lives, etc. So the previous version of the model didn't directly include packaging, uh, so you can only make assumptions about packaging amounts or sizes. It wasn't something you could directly see the impact of. As I said, our goal has been to increase, improve the model generally, and we've achieved that. But um, the added functionality of packaging waste and packaging as a direct part isn't the most important. Okay. It lets us identify and quantify trade-offs uh, where attempts to change packaging might increase food waste and vice versa. 
uh, as I said before, the, the packaging, including packaging, is the, is the major change we've made, but it's far from the last. We've included many other uh, additions to the functionality as well. Uh, this version of the model runs much more quickly. And we can also simulate things like portioning behavior, changes in shelf life, and the impact of storage location in the home. We can also run multiple different uh, household types in parallel. So the model is much more powerful, essentially. Let's give you some more detail on what the model is and how it works. The model essentially works by simulating how a product moves through the home with its packaging from the market to the cupboard or fridge to being consumed and then being disposed of. And you can see that flow there. This is fundamentally how the model's arranged. It simulates single products moving through this sort of trajectory through the home, from the shop to the home to disposal uh, over and over again, many, many times. And for each of the sections in this structure, there are input parameters, which affects how a household behaves or how the product is configured. And this includes things like product size, packaging weight, how often the consumer eats, and how it's eating a meal, and other things like this. Some of these, some of these sort of decisions or parameters can be set probabilistically, or they can be set to distributions or switched on and off, and they can be customized depending on what data you have. On the other side of the, um, the flow, we've got the outputs. Uh, we've got a wide range of outputs, which you can use to understand what's happening inside the model and draw conclusions from about the impact of the changes. And these outputs include things like the all important food and packaging waste, uh, packaging waste weights. They also include things like the number of meal events, number of shopping trips, and things like unfulfilled consumption. Uh, here's the full diagram, which describes how the different parts of the model fit together with inputs and outputs. You can see how some of these will relate to each other quite directly, really. And it's just nice to see this how, how this flow, what makes up this flow, what goes into it. So, um, just to finish off the webinar, I'll give you some additional background information on the model, mainly about the sources of the, of the data that informed it, to show that we've been using up-to-date things and show us what, what some of our assumptions are and what we've been building this on. So we've, we've used a wide range of data sets to inform what the model ones that we've done, but we've also produced some data sets to inform how the model fits together ourselves. So that's secondary and primary data. So for example, we use the, the data from Living Costs and Food Survey and data from the National Diet and Nutrition Survey um, to create data on purchasing habits and consumption to inform the different household types. Uh, for data on packaging weights, we used our pack data on packaging. We also used proprietary DAP wrap data, sorry, um, to inform the settings we used for storage locations of the model, for example, and other things. But, but on our project, we also had two work packages producing primary data to be used in uh, constructing how the model worked, for example. One of these was qualitative, which I was responsible for, and the other work package involved testing fresh produce over time to find out uh, about the shelf lives of produce in different conditions, so we could simulate that realistically in the model. I'll give you some more detail on these now. So, the work package which involved fresh produce testing used uh, organoleptic evaluation to establish, establish scores for produce at different stages of degradation over time. And with these scores, we were able to create rates of degradation for different storage conditions. So you can see here, this is an example of the kind of things the team were evaluating, which is bananas uh, going off, although this particular set of images wasn't used. Um, but in the graphs, you can see that the, um, the four, four, cent, uh, four degrees temperature degradation rate uh, which is the, the graphs incidentally, is much slower than the rate for grapes at 23 degrees. And the presence of lids on the grapes also has an impact on that rate. Uh, we incorporated these rates into the model so that we can set these rates of degradation to change depending on what the storage location is. So, so this is a sort of dynamic degradation. And this which is a, rather than relying on um, an absolute number for shelf life alone. For the qualitative work package that I was responsible for, involved doing interviews and diary research with around 30 participants to learn about how their practices affected their food uh, and packaging and how it moved through the home and how eventually this food and packaging together sort of becomes waste or, or splits apart and becomes waste in different ways. And this is to inform the model structure and some of the key decision points in the model. Participants could also send in photos to this and you can see some of these here. These are from my research participants. And they show some elements of what we were able to add into the model that was informed by this qualitative research. For example, the role of containers in structuring fridge and freezer for storage. Uh, you know, we found that some customers remove fresh produce from packaging before storing it in the fridges, and the role of meal planning and particular recipes. And we were able to include aspects of those uh, findings into the model directly. 
in the way it works. So this gives an idea of what we've been doing to improve the model and the kind of things it's based on and the things it can address in addition to food and plastic waste. Okay, so uh, thank you for listening to this webinar today. Uh, we're really happy to let you know about the, the household simulation model and to sort of tell you what it can do. Uh, you can ask RAP to use it for you as a modeling tool if you like. We want to help you use it any way we can and we're open to inquiries. Uh, please get in touch with Rachel to buy at RAP if you have any, any more questions on the model or you'd like to know more or even if you'd like to use it. Uh, on the left there, you can see the list of people who've been working on the model and the institutions that they've been based at. Christian Reynolds is the principal investigator of the project there at the top. And you may be familiar with some of his work with RAP over the years. So we're working on a web page to gather all, to gather all the resources and documents relating to the model and our findings related to it, and this should be live really soon. Uh, many of the resources today will be available there, and the web page will be blogs.city.ac.uk forward slash household food simulation, and no breaks at the, the end there. Um, thank you for listening today, and hopefully uh, you'll be in touch with RAP and you can get using the model.